Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Omron CP1H to Seymour EA9-RHMI communication. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first thing we'll do is actually start with our hardware and if we look at our hardware we currently have our Omron uh, CP1H PLC which uh, we are communicating with our CX programmer through our USB port here we have um, a communication module a plug-in module um, that is communicating RS45 over to my Seymour EA9 RHMI which is a headless HMI unit or human machine interface and it will display information for the operator or collect data. It actually also will send email, log data. It has an FTP server, a web server, and it will do a lot of different things for you uh, in your application. So it gives you a great insight into what your controller is actually doing on the plant floor. You could also use the um, uh, HDMI port on the unit to actually communicate to a large screen TV uh, for statistics and everything else that you want to display for your, your plant data. So that is our EA9 RHM uh, I and we are communi currently communicating through port number two which is RS45 over to the same port here on our um, Omron PLC and you also see on our PLC we have a uh, our analog input which is our uh, potentiometer using a, a battery going into our first analog input module right here and we will be controlling our first output uh, relay on this unit here with through a series of uh, remote uh, HMI display units so that is actually our physical hardware. Now the first thing we'll do now is look at our PLC program and looking at CX programmer here, the very first thing we want to do is ensure that under PLC and under the edit, you'll look at settings and you must make sure that the startup mode here on this tab is actually a monitor mode. Now with the Omron PLCs, if you are communicating host link uh, protocol which is this is what we're doing on our serial communication port then if you have it in any other mode except for monitor so if you have it in run mode what will happen is that you will not be able to send or write data to the controller so we must ensure that that's in monitor mode now the other way to get there is actually go over to our new project here and just look click on settings over here so a couple different ways of getting there so the first line of our, our first rung and second rung contain our start, stop and jog bits. And you can see here that my start HMI starts at 21, channel 21 bit 00. My stop is 22 bit 00. And my jog bit is uh, 23 bit 00 here. And then my output is my first output, which is channel 100 bit 00. Then I have my analog input here. And what we're doing is we're scaling our analog input that comes in channel 200. And we scale it from 0 to 100. And we put it in output uh, DM0 right here. So we'll have this value going from 0 to 100. Then we have our um, LED CPU display. And that is located right here on our unit. It's a two segment uh, uh, display unit that we can put a very our value in. So what we're gonna do is take DM1 that will come from our, our uh, HMI and we will put that value 
into D1 and that will interpret that into our actual display unit and show the, the uh, digits. So that is our program that we will be running. Now let's go look at our Seymour programming software. Here it is right here. And for this uh, particular program, we have one page only. So if we look up our setup and we'll go to uh, panel manager, you will see under panel manager, this tells us that what type of panel that we have, which is the EA9 RHMI. It tells us our pro project resolution that we want on our screen because there is no built-in screen we actually add a screen to this. So we're using the uh, high definition, the 1080 by 720. Then we have our start screen number, which is one. We only have the one screen that we're actually gonna program in this case. And then we have a lot of different other variables. One thing I like to do is turn on the large keypad on the, on the display. So you'll see a larger keypad. And you notice I've turned off the beeps just so that we can uh, show this uh, uh, video without a lot of beeping going on. Okay, so that is our panel manager and that is our setup of our resolution. Then if we look at port number two, which is our RS-45, you see a picture right here. This is our um, application that we're gonna be doing on our port. So our PLC protocol is gonna be the Omron C200 slash C500 host link adapter. Now this host link uh, adapter, uh, which is the uh, port that we're looking at right here. That's the protocol um, that will go on to that RS-45 into the Omron. And on that port, uh, we have host link number zero, baud rate 9600, and we have even parity, seven data bits, two stop bits, and this is default uh, parameters for the Omron host link module. And one of the important things to do is ensure that we have the link selector to multiple. So because we're using the host link RS-45, it automatically is multiple units that you can communicate to the Omron PLC through this protocol. So this must be multiple and it will default to a single. So you have to make sure that you actually change this to the multiple in order to have that protocol for one to many or one to end type communications. So once we have all that set, is it okay? Now, if we go into panel manager or setup and go into panel network. Now in panel network, what this will do, it's gonna set up the name of the panel for us. In this case here, we called it RHMI Omron CP1H. Then we'll uh, set up our ethernet port and what we're doing is setting up a static IP address for this uh, port. And we wanna do that because we have remote control going on with this to the Omron PLC. So in our case here, we're gonna use IP address 192.168.1.24. We have a subnet mask and then we have a default gateway. The default gateway uh, is used when you're trying to communicate outside of the uh, network or you want to send email, things like that. Then our DNS server, we're going to set this up for our Google um, default DNS servers, which is 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. So once we have that, it's all set. Then we can go down to our web server, which is required to do our remote um, access. So we set up our web server. We set up a password here, um, ACCA, with a password of ACCA for this example. And then we go to our remote access and we turn this on. And down here, we're going to say we're going to have full control. Our account name will be ACCA and our password ACCA. Our user restriction, this tells me how many users can use that password and that account at the same time controlling this PLC. So in this case here, I'm done two. So what we'll do is we'll try to control this through our Android device as well as our Windows device. So okay. 
So that is our um, setup of our Seymour headless unit. So now if we look at our database and look at our tag database, and going down here, we've already pre-programmed in a few of these uh, units like the analog input, which is DM0, our push button start, uh, IR21, bit 00, and then our output, IR100, uh, bit 00, our stop, IR22 bit 00 and our jog 23 bit 00 and then finally our, dis our display will be DM1 and it'll show up DM1. You'll also notice that um, on our analog we have BCD that's going to be coming in as as a 16-bit resolution and on our display we're going to be sending unsigned integer 16-bit because we want to read the values from zero or set the values from zero zero to ff. So there are our parameters that we're doing for our tag database. And then if we look at the actual screen we have here, we have our indication button. So again, we're using our start push button here and our output here to light the little button. Then we have just a, um, a push button display and we're using the push button here. And again, these are all momentary uh, buttons. What I like to do is use momentary so that the PLC controls when to turn things on and off as opposed to the screen. So if communication does not take place, then we still have control within the uh, PLC to do so. Then we have our jog. And the jog, again, is another push button. We just use the PB jog and it's momentary. On our analog display here, we have our, there's our analog signal. We set a min, a zero, a max of 100 analog input. And um, that analog input tag is actually refers back to this one right here, which is our DM0. Then we have our display for that analog, DM0. And we just set it up so that it gives us a visual indication as well. Then our DM1. This is actually our numeric edit or entry. And what we've done is put a range on this from 0 to 255, which represents the first uh, uh, 8 bits of a channel. So that is the maximum value we can actually enter. Now remember, this will be sent back to the PLC, which will be converted into a binary number or hexadecimal, and then put, put on those two uh, seven segment displays located right here. So that's it. So that is our program in a nutshell. And what we do after we do this is we send our information to the controller through our variable here. And you see we can send it through the, the same port that we're actually communicating on our ethernet, or we could use our USB here. So I've already done that. And next what we'll do is call up our web server. And our web server is right here. And what we do is we wanna go down, we just type in on our browser, the address number of our IP address for this unit, which is 192.168.1.24. We then go down to the remote access and under remote access, we click in the built-in um, uh, unit right here because we are not going through any firewall. And what that will do is then send a, a program down for us to actually call up in order to control this remotely through Windows. Now, once we've got this downloaded, we can then modify uh, anything we want on the network and send this to other locations and this will be the same program that we use all over So when we call this up Here's what it looks like and what we'll do is hit start and Again, it'll ask for my password before anything happens. We know that it was uh, a C C A and My password code a C C A. We'll hit okay 
So what that will do now is call up our screen that we now have programmed in our unit. If we want to see this working, if we hit the on, you will see that it now highlights on and you see my output, first output here on PLC is now hit lit. So everything seems to be working fine there. If we hit off, it then turns off. And if we hit jog, we have to hit and hold this. As long as I hold it, it's on. If I let it go, it turns off. Now our analog is on a scale and we can just uh, probably reduce this down a little bit here, move it over. There we go. And you see it automatically resizes for us. If I take my potentiometer here and we'll turn it up, you can see that value now increasing. And we can then turn it down and you see it goes down. And then finally, we have a value currently right now of 10 in our DM1, which represents the value A that we see here on our screen. If we go to the maximum value, so we hit this, um, what will happen is we'll bring up a numeric keypad, we'll enter 255, hit enter. And once we do that, the 255 then appears there and we get our FF which is exactly what 255 represents in our controller. So we've controlled digital inputs and outputs. We've controlled uh, register uh, inputs and outputs. And then if we want to change this back to another number, again, we just click it. We'll hit uh, nine, hit enter. And now the value of nine will now appear on our screen right here. Now, we can also, through this unit, go to our Android device. And through our Android device, we call up a software called Remote HMI. We can uh, unlock this by double clicking. And then again, we can turn this on. And you will see that my output is on. We can turn this off and the output is off, or we can hold this for jog. So all from the convenience of our phone, we can actually now have an insight into our PLC controller and what's actually happening. If I turn my potentiometer up, you can see it going up, or we can turn it down. And currently right now we have our DM at, at one, which is representing our eight or seven segment display. Let's just click it and let's put back the value of 255. And as soon as I put enter, you can see that it has now put it into our controller and we see it on our seven segment display. So the there is also an application. This is a free application for both Android and iOS system, as well as your Windows that we have here. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click that bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.